So I finally got to finish reading Paper Girls. I read all three image hardcovers. These are the deluxe oversized editions, and it contains the whole thing in three books. Anyway, uh, this is these were $34.99 each cover price, but of course they're discounted heavily at InStockTrades.com. That's where I got mine. That's where I recommend you to go get them, and they're still readily available. So this is probably the type of thing that's going to stay in print, hopefully. Volume 1 was 320 pages, Volume 2 is 288, and Volume 3 was 320. And this thing has won several Eisner Awards for writing, penciling, inking, coloring, and there's even a TV show coming. So, yeah, I thought it was time to read it, and I've heard nothing but good stuff about it from everybody who reviews it, you know, including my daughter, you know, Kristen. And anyway, this this edition I these editions I have are fantastic quality. They're oversized hardcovers from Image, and as is typical with them, no issues whatsoever. No issues with the binding, nothing. They're just perfect. And it's one of my all-time favorite formats. Actually, it's probably second to the Gallery Edition, the Marvel Gallery Edition. But these are very nice. Highly recommend uh, getting them in, in this way. You can get them in a lot of different ways. They have some soft cover editions. There's even a big fat soft cover compendium if you'd rather have it all in one giant uh, tome. Now the creators on this, uh, thankfully, they are the same crew for all three all three volumes, the whole series straight through. Written by Brian K. Vaughn, one of my favorite writers of all time. Uh, I'm not going to go into much about him right here, but if you want to learn more and want to see my other remarks I made about him, Check out my uh, Top 10 Writers video, and I'll put a link down to doobly-doo for that if you want to check that out. Learn a little more about Brian K. Vaughn. As if there's someone on, on the planet that's a comics fan that doesn't know Brian K. Vaughn, but maybe you don't. So yeah, he is one of my favorites of all time for sure. Uh, the artist on this is Cliff Chang. Now, I was very unfamiliar with his work before, and it's probably because he's best known before this thing. He was best known for a lot of stuff he did with DC, stuff like Wonder Woman and a few other titles, which that explains why I wasn't familiar with him. Not a big DC guy here. But uh, yeah, he's fantastic, and I'm glad to know him now, for sure, to know his work. Now, I don't usually mention colors and letters, but in this one I'm going to, because it's pretty spectacular and it's pretty special. The colorist on this was Matt Wilson. Very unusual work here. Uh, to, to me, and very well done. Now, the awesome lettering is by Jared K. Fletcher. And I really love the bold choices he made here uh, using mixed case fonts. I mean, it, it seems like it shouldn't be a big deal, but it is. In comic books, it's a big deal. You almost never see that. It's always all uppercase. And, and I, I think that dates back to a time when the printing methods we had were more primitive, and it was hard to do mixed case and have it legible at the small sizes that comic books came in and comic strips before that. So that's probably why that didn't happen, but there's really no reason you can't have mixed case now, and I think we should. I think the whole industry should move to that, and, and this guy can show you the way because he did a bang-up job here. Uh, it's fantastic. Just, just check it out. It's mixed case just like it was a real book. Real book, you know? <laughs> no reason to have it in all caps, and, and in this one it's not. So good on them for that. This work was originally published as 30 single comics. Uh, and those came out between 2015 and 2019 and all completed at that point. Now, this story has been compared to Netflix's Stranger Things a lot. And that's a fair comparison because there are a lot of similarities. I do love Stranger Things. But the truth is this is even better. Now, it's, it's, it's smarter. It has better characterization. Uh, it's just better. Now, it's probably not really fair to compare a comic book work like this, especially a creator-owned one, to uh, a TV show. Because with a TV show, you got a lot more masters than just two or three. You know, you, you've got the, the primary director and writers, the, and then you've got uh, different episodes have different writers, different directors come in. you got producers, and then you got a network or streaming service involved. They're holding the purse strings. So everybody's got an opinion, and everybody gets to mess with your work, but not with a creator on comic book. And that's what you got here. You've got a, I won't say a single vision, but you got three people, four people, I guess, if you want to count 
the penciler, the writer, the colorist, and the, and the letterer to guide this thing. Yeah. You don't have a line of executives or a committee somewhere deciding, you know, what this character can do and what they can't do. So, so that's one of the advantages to this medium that we love, comic books. But yeah, it's – this story, I mean, the main characters are four 12-year-old girls, and they deliver newspapers, in, and the setting is the year 1988. So now, while Stranger Things leads more toward horror, uh, this is more science fiction. Uh, smart science fiction, too, I, I dare say. And it involves time travel, which, you know, a lot of people, they either love time travel stories or they hate them. And I'm one of those dudes that love them. I just, lo I'm a sucker for time travel stories. Yeah, since I've been a little kid and my whole life, really. I mean, I, you know, all the way back to H.G. Wells, The Time Machine, and all the adaptations it has had over the years uh, to... Doctor Who and Time Bandits, you know, Terry Gilliam's Time Bandits was one of my favorites forever, you know, and that's, and now Paper Girls. So this is a beautiful story with fantastic art, fantastic color, and it doesn't take long for the reader to get caught up in the surprising plot and to really begin to like and care about these girls. I mean, it's just done that well. The conclusion is good. It's if a little heartbreaking in some ways. But this work is another example of something that raises the bar and elevates the medium and shows the world, you know, what a comic book is capable of, you know. We just got to get it out there to them. So maybe with the TV show coming up, hopefully that actually happens. You know, people announce things and then they don't pan out. But So hopefully that, that'll happen and maybe it'll be good and, and maybe it'll get some more eyeballs on this work. So, you know non-traditional eyeballs, not, not comic fans like us, but people who are, are, have never read a comic book. Maybe they'll pick this one up and be wowed because I don't know how you could read this and not be wowed. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's really something. Highly recommend it. Uh, if you haven't read this, you need, to, you need to get it. This is 10 stars all the way, pretty much perfect in every way. Another great one. And the art does not disappoint as well. It's good. Next Monday, I'll be back with Wolverine Weapon X Gallery Edition. So come on back for that. And if you like my stuff and you want to keep seeing it, make sure you hit subscribe, bell notify yourself, uh, give me a like if you like this stuff. And if you really like it and you want to help me out and keep this going and fund this kind of expensive hobby, you know, <laughs> yeah, help me with that, you know, and the equipment and all that. If you really want to and you have the means to do it, I do have a Patreon. And I don't have minimum levels or any of that kind of stuff. So, you know, whatever you want to do, if you want to do it at all, it's down there in the doobly-doo. But either way, hey, come on back and uh, check out more of my stuff. And I'll see you next time.